period of recession itself. OK, Professor Philbrook, thanks very much. And we will stay with the issue of younger people in particular because I'm joined by Daniel Snell, who's founder of Arrival Education, which works with disadvantaged school leavers to, to try to help them find work. And Daniel, I, I can't really think of a, a worse time for you to, to, to be trying to do the sort of work you are doing. Uh, what are the, the key obstacles for you? Well, it's a very interesting space to be right now. I think there's probably good news and there is bad news. So obviously these figures are pretty they're bad news and particularly those communities that I'm working which are challenging inner city communities there is a range of 40 to 50 percent unemployment now the good news is I think the government are doing some very interesting work in the space and there is money available through the work at innovation fund places like the Vox Center that a are, are, are running are helping young people that I'm trying to work with get into back into work now the private equity foundation recently did a piece of research on that the major issues are not that there are age with work. So typically only one in ten people from the communities I work in are engaging with work directly after leaving school. There aren't the pathways into work, they don't know how to get into work, and even if they did get into work, they wouldn't really know what to do once they arrive but there. But are they, are they applying for jobs and simply not getting them? What is, what is the key? We're talking about 16 to 24 years. We are, we are. Uh, so the major issue is confidence. And a lot of these young people have never been in work, they never had work experience, Experience. they don't know how to go after it they don't know how to apply and because their confidence is so low they don't know how to move forward and very quickly they give up hope so therefore um the, the weight is against them and therefore even if there were j jobs available for that community which there there is uh, they struggle to know how to get into them and 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 uh even if they did get them, they probably wouldn't last very long because they don't know how to be in those particular jobs. And in terms of the application process, is it too simplistic to say, can't somehow this be taught at school? Isn't, it, isn't this part of what, the building blocks? You, you're going to get me furious on this particular point because uh, schools don't really uh, uh, get people up for the world of work. Schools get people for academics. Uh, what the work world needs is not getting taught in school. Surely that's a simple thing to uh, put together. Surely pathways into work are more sensible. I know the government is committed to doing apprenticeships. There are 75,000 extra apprenticeships at the moment. But what we really need to see is how to get these young people with the necessarily real skills to get into work. Oh, OK, that's and if everything you say makes sense. However, I just know there will be people listening to you saying this is all very well and, of course, these things should be taught in school. But in some areas, there still are not the jobs there. This is a 78,000 increase in this age bracket in these latest figures. It's significant. It's significant. But if you look, again, a lot of their parents aren't in, in work either. So it's not that, that there isn't work out there because there is. They just don't know how to get at it. And yes, the market isn't as good as it was. For instance, 5.3 unemployed to vacancies compared to 2.4 in March 2008. Yes, the figures don't look good, but there are opportunities out there and people are responding to it. It's just people don't know how to signpost these young people into the pathway uh, in the right way. OK, perhaps we'll talk again, again about that. Thank you very much for now. Thank Daniel for Snell me. from Arrival Thank Education. Thank you. Let's speak to Adam Marshall, who's Director of Policy at the British Chambers of Commerce.